Hi, this is Bobby with Grub Mug Concrete. Today we're working out in Speedway, Indiana. Um, where we're putting two foot wide uh, driveway extension on the edge of this driveway. Pretty simple job, just a light broom finish. Um, so we dig it out. Uh, we light, run a line at 27 inches and we dig it out. A little extra to put our board in. Um, you can see I put my rebar about every six feet. Um, just a little dowel to keep it up and that, that way it never settles on the uh, next to the existing concrete and the same thing on this side dig it out a little extra so you can get your board in um, make your uh, concrete fall away from the existing concrete pretty simple um, but the reason we got a late start um, on it today was because of the rain um, but we knocked this job out all in one day I like to have these little jobs laying around um, for possible rain days if you like our videos um, would you please uh, hit that subscribe button and ring that bell um, to help support our channel. And if you like the concrete, hit the like button. It would also support our channel. Um, but like I was saying, I like to have these little jobs. Um, I don't necessarily give the customer a scheduled date. I like to have them um, to fill in with. And um, I like to keep, keep, a, keep at least four or five in the bag um, at all times. So we got all this dug out, um, concrete's at 1 p.m. We're using IMI Ready Mix. Um, they're a really reputable company up here in Indianapolis, Indiana. Um, we're going to be pouring in a six bag mix with 1% high performance. Some people call it high early. Uh, IMI's tickets say six bag high performance. You might also wonder why we're wheelbarrowing this and why we brought the concrete truck all the way up here. Well, that's actually a public street right there. And we don't ever bring concrete trucks across the driveway unless the customer just wants us to for some reason. Um, I don't want to take a chance on breaking it and having to replace the whole driveway, even though it's already cracked. That's about a, about a five slump, four and a half, five slump um, with the 1% higher early. It was about 70 degrees. So um, this stuff, uh, you, you would have thought it would have got, uh, got with it, but um, I think the high humidity slowed it down a little bit. So my dad and Josh, they were wheelbarrowing it up, and I always tell them, uh, "Don't fill your wheelbarrows up all the way." Yeah, if you wanna, if you wanna really work hard, um, you can get uh, twelve wheelbarrows, wheelbarrows per, per yard. But um, we 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 usually uh, go about twenty per yard. There's no reason to kill yourself. Um, it's just there's no sense in it. So um, these nice half wheelbarrows, they're 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 not too bad. Um, I mean, it's pretty simple, really. I think a freshman in high school could do it, especially wheeling up on existing concrete. Um, but Steven's kind of mag, striking it off with the mag basically, um, and I get to come along and kind of start raking it around for him, getting it close to level. And uh, my dad and Josh, they just keep on bringing them and bringing them and bringing them. Pretty, pretty simple job, but... Um, like I said, I like to keep keep some of these simple, easy jobs to fill in with. There you can see the rebar sticking out about six inches. That just keeps it from settling. There's our washout bag to the left right there. Um, a lot of the companies here in Indiana, they make you have a washout bag. They don't really let you wash out in wheelbarrows. Some do, but um, they're all going to be going away from that pretty soon. Um, where you're going to have to have uh, a washout bag. I like how uh, I see some of these guys pump them and they... They pump it right back into the truck. That's pretty slick. Yeah, you'll see us use wheelbarrows and buggies a lot, um, or just pour it straight out of the truck. We use a, a usually use a four thousand or six bag mix, and um, use that number eight stone. It's like about a three quarter inch round stone. It's it's a real strong mix, um, and uh, it's got air entrained in it, which basically a bunch of little air bubbles, and it, it actually it's it's mixed in with the concrete, and it actually gives it strength. So I said round stone, I meant jagged stone. Um, a round stone is a gravel mix. This is actually a number eight stone mix. There's Steven, he's running a bull float on it. I wouldn't have done that, but you know, I'm not gonna tell him not to. I mean, it's just his way of doing it. And who am I to tell him that he's wrong, you know? So he's just running a bull float on it real quick instead of magging it back off. Um, there's really no right or wrong way to do concrete. Um, it's kind of cool seeing how different people do things differently, and um, especially around the country and stuff. Uh, 
you know, for a long time, I thought I knew it all about concrete until I joined some uh, Facebook groups about concrete and uh, started watching YouTube videos about how different people do things around the country. And and um, what really inspired me to do this um, was uh, some guys out of California, uh, the West Coast. They uh, they do a really really good job. If you haven't seen any of their videos, I highly recommend watching them. Uh, he kind of has the same type of situation as I was in, um, according to his story, it sounds like, and um, it just kind of inspired me to do something different. And uh, now that I got clean and off of drugs, uh, things have been going really well, and and uh, and we're gonna keep it that way. And doing this YouTube, uh, it also kind of keeps you accountable, um, keeps you accountable, because if you were to mess up, then you would just look like an idiot, you know what I mean? And I don't, uh, I don't plan on doing that, so. Um, so on this one, I think Steven's on the backside catching up the edges, and I'm just kind of mag, mag striking this one off, closing it up just a little bit, more just striking it off with the mag, and then Steven will come and catch up, uh, and I'll help him catch up and uh, with the closing it up with the mag, and and then he'll put an edge on it. And we'll cut some joints in it, and we we go down to one Wilbur. Um, usually at the end so we'll get another guy out there on a float or an edger but yeah I'm kind of closing it up with the mag there and Steven's running that inside edge always uh, edge up against your concrete first because it's going to be the first thing that it's going to get harder faster and it's going to be harder to edge um, that that usually sucks the moisture right out on the edge um, and you can always run an edge up against the board um, even when it gets hard, that's no big deal. But sometimes some guys will struggle with, uh, if they don't do that inside edge first. Another guy that uh, really inspired me to do this, uh, a guy out of Maine, um, his name's Mike Day. He does some, uh, teaches a lot about concrete too. And, um, you know, I, I just, uh, it, it just kind of fills, fills my time and um, keeps me accountable. And, um, you know, it just, it's fun to do too. And it's cool that I can show show off what we're doing, you know what I mean? Uh, never saying we're the best or anything like that, but we do a good job, never have any customer complaints. The customers always are really happy with the experience. This is called a uh, control joint. So I matched the control joints on the driveway, and then since it's so narrow, I cut some extra ones just to help prevent, um, well, I mean, if it cracks, it's gonna crack in our joint. And um, being that it was so narrow, that it, it, it could, so I've cut a couple extra. Now the truck's getting out of there. Um, he he washed up, and then my dad sprayed off the hand tools that we weren't using. And we'll put a a, a light to a medium broom finish on this. Um, there you see, he's got edges on both sides. Joints are cut in. Uh, they're just cleaning the edges up one more time in the joints, and then uh, we'll be ready to broom. It's kind of nice having some guys that know what they're doing. Um, for a while, you know, I was doing this where I was the only finisher and, uh, it's too taxing, too stressful. Um, it's just, it's best just to get some guys to know what they're doing. And, uh, I can definitely say Steven and Josh and my dad, they know what they're doing. And everybody out here, uh, we don't, nobody out here does any drugs or drinks or anything. So we're, we have a lot of fun while we're working and, um, you know, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. Um, we joke around, we don't get stressed out. See, that's pretty close to a broom right there. Just got to clean up the joints and uh, float it out one more time. You see, we don't float any little uh, chunks that, or any grass that gets on it. We always pick that stuff off. But the only way people like uh, Josh, you know, are going to perfect what they're doing is to get a, keep on doing it. So kind of got a chance to film them on this one and, um, and, and you know, teach them a little bit like... You always got to clean your joints out. Don't run your edger through it. Um, it's just something you have to go back and, and fix. So he's he's catching on pretty quick. And, um, you know, he's been doing concrete about 10 years, but he was just a laborer for the longest time. And, uh, you know, it's kind of cool when you start seeing some people really getting the hang of some things. What he's doing there is he's scraping some mud up and he's filling up his, his low spots on his edge. It's always important to use, uh, if you're using two edgers, to use the same type of edger with the same um, radius on the same uh, half inch or three quarter rate whatever you're using use the same one on the whole job that way you don't um, have two different edgers that don't match I 
I think uh, I think that's kind of what was going on here is uh, one of the edgers wasn't quite a match with it, which I I got my box figured out and uh, got all the right matching edgers and whatnot and joiners. There's Steven just cleaning it up one more time, floating his lines out, getting it ready for the broom. So we did all this in one day, um, and if you if you do these little jobs in one day, they can be they can be kind of lucrative, you know. Um, they're definitely good filling days. It keeps your crew busy so they don't go off and get another job, which is uh, really important. You got to have some good help. There's Steven putting the uh, I'd say that's a medium broom. Um, you know, you got to have some traction up here in Indiana. There you go. And then you got to caution tape it all off about 4:30 in the afternoon out of here and come back tomorrow and strip the forms customer is really happy thanks for watching we sure do appreciate it please hit that like and subscribe button to support our channel